Alright, so this is uh, just going to be a quick follow-up on the input stuff. Uh, this stuff is slightly less relevant on the more common use side of things, but still exists, which is worth noting. Uh, so one restriction from the previous video was this is like a fun U function with no parameters, right? This is a U function with only a float for an axis to go by. So what if you wanted to pass in a bind that had an input that wasn't a float and never changed? They're the conditions. Well, first you think, ah, oh, it's not possible. So uh, my first approach when I tried this was the templating side of things, and it it doesn't seem to work because templates and new functions don't mix. I did read there's some macro solution, but I'm not too sure how that works, honestly. <laughs> uh, <coughs> anyway, the solution I, uh, I've i discovered after typing in things, after hours upon hours, is there does seem to be some input stuff into the thing, which I figured out when I like, hovered over all this stuff and it noticed the return type was f input action binding, which makes me think, hmm, maybe I can make one of my own. So f input action binding, right, and we'll call this, oh no, action. Uh, so yeah, you declare your action binding. So this is what basically the first chunk of this bind is. So you have to give it a name and an event. So oh, action name equals f name uh, param action we'll call it. And this, before we forget, we'll go into here, project settings, action, param action and we'll put this on 2, just because why not? Every time. Action, dot action, uh, wait, not action, key event equals IE pressed. So, here we go. Name of the action, event for the action, then you need a handler, so declare your action handler. So what is it? F input action handler signature? I think it's this one. So we'll call it action handler. And then you have to this is kind of the um delegate side of things, so action handler dot bind u function. Yep, u function because it's a u function, no doubt. Notice there were a few other options, that does make me think you can do some even more fancy things I'm not aware of uh, in this, but anyway, you can do this, and then so you pass it, it's, these are the next half parameters, so you want to call the function from this class, and then the name Wait, do I need the name? Uh, oh yeah, of course I do. Name. So this one's what triggers the event, and this one's what you're going to call. So we'll just call test. I think I've already made test. Uh, what else? And, oh no, we need to make a, the whole point of this, of course, we need to make a parameter side of things. So, where's our test? If we make u function void test with, say, an int, right? So, if you bind this and then you pass in your parameter, which will be, we'll say, 5, just because why not? Right? <coughs> Notice I did try and use this for a more dynamic thing where you pass in a parameter that's changing, but that doesn't work because this only gets set once. So it'll be bound to whatever it is on startup, and that'll be the parameter it uses for the rest of the consumption of the binding. Anyway, action handler dot action delegate. Where are thou? Is it not in here? 
Oh no, it's on the off one, isn't it? Action, not action. Yeah, here we go. This is basically assigning the handler to the delegate. Right, so there's action dot action delegate equals action handler, and now the last thing to do is to add the action binding. So, get your input component, and then you can do add action binding, and then you need to add the action. So, it's kind of a long winded way of doing things, but it works. It's the same. As, it's the same syntax to how timers do it, which I'll get into probably soon, because uh, they're really useful. So, what's going on? Let's see. We need to make another test function. Void a tutorials character test int parameter. And then what we want to do is we want to print out something, but we want to print out test input was released via custom bound printing it's an int so we want digit and then we want to output param right That's some more string formatting d for digit s for kind of string ish miscellaneous type things so with like other pointers stuff you have to dereference and then dot two strings sometimes this one's the most complicated I think D is digits, so ints, F for floats, and that D, F, and S are pretty much the standard what you're going to use the most. Anyway, action, this will run when I press param action, which is on 2, it will run test with passing in 5, so it will run test passing in 5 over here, and you should get this printed out. So let's check that, shall we? going on. Are you not allowed to override the same function? should be able to, honestly. Okay. Test 2. I'm pretty sure it should have let me do that, because it's overridden the function with a parameter, so I guess not. Interesting. Compiling. Right, so now open up the output log, save in case it closes itself. Press 2. Hey, look at that. Notice. So if I press 1, was it? It prints the regular one. Press 2, it prints custom bound printing 5. And I can still sprint. That's uh, good. I'm not sure where my gun's gone. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Custom bounds. And you can do anything with these. So you, if you want to make a release one, literally copy paste. I released. And then make this like 78. So, one example could be if you had an inventory and you wanted to change gun. So, you had a sl four guns on 1, 2, 3, 4. And you wanted to use 1, 2, 3, 4 to change your guns. Right? Oh yeah, <laughs> lol, I know why. <laughs> You're not allowed to have the same name redefined. So basically we want to put a 2 on the end of all these. Kind of awkward. What? Uh, yeah, so you have four guns, and you press 1 to get your first gun, but you want to ch say you wanted to get your fourth gun without you doing a, a next gun in inventory sort of deal. So you can use this to like basically pick the right gun to swap to. 
Or you could do it even more fancy so you'd have like a cache reference to your gun class, you have a reference to your current gun, and you can just check current gun and then desired gun and swap that way with just one parameter instead of making like four bound functions. Now if I do this, two. Does that work? Not sure if that worked. to not be working for the release one. Not sure why. Ah, that's why. I missed two. I was gonna say, there's nothing wrong with this logic. <laughs> There we go. Press it for 5, let go of 78. See, there you go. There's quite a few uses for this, actually. I'm sure you can come up with some things. But that example I gave is probably the first one that comes to mind. Anyway, hope you got something out of that. This little bit, this paragraph for custom delegate bindings. Pretty much. So you can pass in your own parameters now, as long as they don't... The key is, it's fixed. So it can only be one thing. So if you pass in something that changed, it'll only take its initial face value. Anyway, that's it for this one. Further input stuff. Until next time. <laughs>